Oh, hello. How are we doing, Sam? Over here to your left. Yes, how are you doing? Mate? How are you doing? First UFC media day. Um, how's, how's the feeling first off in your first fight week here? Yeah, it's amazing. The week's going smoothly. Um, have it, it's just all run so smoothly, you know, like um, the UFC PI helping with the nutrition, the system that you've all got going. It's just all so smooth and makes it stress-free for me, you know. And like you said, the first one, the last one was the Contender Series, so this microphone's a little bit different, so it's nice. It's been a, it's been a relatively uh, long run-up for you since then. So, sort of, you know, September was the last one. So you've had a, a good period of time to sort of get yourself ready for this fight. Um, how's it been so far, and, and what have you done differently, if anything, as you get ready for your UFC debut? Um, nothing really has changed, you know. Like, I've been winning. We've been winning. So if it's not broken, don't fix it, as they say. And um, I have been in the gym since my last fight, since September, because I tried and I wanted to get out before the end of the year. You know, I wanted to be fighting December. It didn't come, didn't come to uh, fruition, but uh, we're here now, and it's paid off, to be honest, because I've been in the gym nonstop, getting better, and I get to fight in my hometown. It's been a long time since then, so I'm happy to, happy to be here. Ten fights, nine finishes. I know most of your fights have been, or mo most recently, they've been over, over four for, for Brave. Um, would you say you're... One of the best kept secrets in, in UK MMA, and that's all going to be blown out of the water on Saturday. Yeah, maybe. I didn't think of it like that, but I'll take it. You know, um, the UK scene is hot. There's a lot of talent. And the fact that I've been fighting abroad in these other countries and stuff and fighting high, high competition, as you can see from my record, yeah, I think Saturday night is a coming out pie. And talk to us about that, that contender series fight and when you know that you've got that opportunity staring you in the face and that one good performance could catapult you onto the big stage, talk to us about that experience and how, how you went through that. Yeah, it was an amazing experience. Um, I believe the pressure of the moment, a lot of people can't handle. Um, a lot of fighters would have carried on racking up wins and just waited for their UFC call um, outside of that. But putting it all on the line, it's... It's what you've got to do, you know. If you truly believe your UFC caliber, which I did and my team did, then the contender series is not a, it's no different, you know. It's another fight to go out there and prove it in front of Dana White. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd done just that. And what an experience flying out to Vegas for the first time. And yeah, I loved every second of it. Got the job done, got the contract. And I believe being here now, like, I haven't. I haven't had to earn it, you know, like I, the Contender Series is where I had to earn it. And I've done that. So now I'm here. I am ready to go. UFC debuts are always something a little bit special for a fighter. But to do it in your hometown with your friends and family in, in the building, how special is that going to be when your music hits the speakers and you walk through the curtain for the first time? It's, good. it's going to be amazing. I visualized it so many. The thing is, I visualized this fight, the week and everything so many times and so many outcomes. I've visualized every outcome, but the one thing that sticks the same in all of it is me embracing the moment. And I could not wait to fight back in front of a home crowd. Um, it's been four years since I've done that, four or five years, fighting abroad, fighting in front of, in a, uh, against opponents that are like their home, their home crowd and stuff. So it's nice to be back on home soil and uh, have the home crowd on my side. And for those people watching from around the world who maybe haven't seen, haven't seen you fight before, what can they expect from a Sam Patterson performance? Uh, they can expect entertainment. You know, like I come out to finish. Um, I'm, not, I'm not stupid with it either. I'm, I'm cool, calm and collected in there. And yeah, I will find the finish within 15 minutes. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Sam, Thank you. Front right here. Uh, obviously, I see your shirt that says the future. Uh, um, there's a, been a lot of fighters that use that nickname. There's one in the welterweight division right now. So, uh, like, what sets you apart from all these other individuals that have that same nickname? Well, it's funny you say that. The future actually has a line for it to prove that I am not the future anymore. I'm exactly where I'm meant to be in the UFC. You said there's a few uh, futures in the uh, UFC, and that's why I kind of dropped the nickname for this one. Um, I was the future getting to this point. And I believe I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. So that's the line. The line going through the future is cutting the nickname. I am no longer the future. I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. Uh, just over here. Hey. Yes. You're ta uh, taking on Yanel. Uh, sorry, taking on Yanel Ashmos, who's obviously making his UFC debut as well. Were you aware of him at all before hearing his name? No, I didn't know who he was um, before. But to be honest. 
I don't really look into any of my opponents. I watch the I watch um, the UFC as a, a fan as well, and once a name comes on like the contract, then I'll look into the opponent. My team will look into the opponent. But I didn't know who he was before. He's making his debut. I'm making my debut. So, so have you looked into him at all since? Um, I see his I see his last fight. Um, it was on the PFL, if I'm not mistaken. But again, it was a year ago. So the way I look at things, if he's improved as much as I have in a year, he's not going to be the same fighter. If he has, he's in for a rough night. If he's the same fighter as he was a year ago, he's in for a rough night. But yeah, if he's made the improvements, leveled up his game, then it's, it's going to be an interesting fight. And having you know, gone through the contender series, did you feel that gives you any kind of edge over him in terms of the experience that you've had with the UFC? I believe my whole career has given me the edge. Um, I faced hard competition outside of the UFC before the contender series. Um, so I believe my whole career fighting outside the UFC is, me the, uh, is going to give me the edge Saturday night. And fighting at the Apex, obviously, is going to be very different to fighting at the O2 on Saturday. How are you anticipating the crowd? Again, I, I visualise the moment and I will take it in my stride. I have faced, like doing the contender series, people say about fighting in the apex. It's a, it's a small arena. It's a small little spot with not a lot of people. But I've done that. I fought during COVID where there was no one. I fought in Russia against a Russian with 3,000 people booing me, you know. So I will take it in my stride. I, don't, I can't tell you what it would be like till it's happened. Um, but like I said, I've visualized every outcome, every moment. And the one thing that stays the same is me embracing the moment. You mentioned you started training in MMA for self-defense, but at what point did you realize that you wanted to make a career out of it? Yeah, I, um, I didn't really start for self-defense. I started training in MMA because my little brother went along to a gym and we grew up watching fighting movies. So um, I've always been interested in training and fighting. But I think I just, the moment we walked into the gym and started training, I picked up like a sponge and I still to today, I still go in the gym and I, you show me a trick, I pick up like a sponge and I learn very quickly. And then, yeah, once I, once I started competing, I just fell in love with it and never looked back. And here we are now. Can you tell us more about your experience training under David Lee and the role he played in your development as a fighter? Yeah. I'll make sure he gets his camera out ready for this. Yeah, no, he's, um, it's never a dull day around David Lee and the team we have over at Team Crossface. Let's put it like that. Um, it's all fun and games. But at the end of the day, he's leveled up my game. I can't even, I can't even tell you how much, you know, like he's, he's gone leaps and bounds. And he's let me keep my style. You know, he doesn't tell me exactly what to do. He doesn't give me, you have to do it this way. Um, he'll give me the path and let me find the way. And, um, yeah, thanks to the team and David Lee, I have, I've leveled up my game and I can't wait to show you all Saturday night. You're on a 10 bout winning streak. How do you maintain your focus and drive to keep winning? Doesn't everyone love winning? Everyone loves to win. So that's the drive. You know, I haven't got complacent. I, I have one loss in my career and I treat, I'm that kind of person. I, I'm the, my worst critic. I come out of the fight and I'm looking at all the wrong things I've done and I'm back in the gym Monday fixing them things. Um, and I've kept that energy since I lost my, one of my pro, uh, pro fights. And that's why I think I keep winning, you know, because I have the energy like I'm not getting comfortable. I'm always trying to evolve. I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to get better. And I feel like you can see that in my performances. Um, I'm never the same fighter. Like I'm always leveling up my game and yeah, come Saturday night, you're going to see a whole new level. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Sam, down, down here to your left. Yes. A lot of fighters, when they make it to the UFC, there's, there's a big temptation for them to go jump, uh, jump and join a big camp like an ATT or an AKA or whatever. But obviously you, you're staying true with David Lee and the rest of your team. Is that just a case of not changing it because it's what got you to the dance? Yes, I believe. Um, I made a point in this camp to stay with my team. We, 
what we've done has worked, you know. I got here with the team around me. I feel like since Leon has said about doing it, it's become a thing that he has proved that you do not need to go to the States or these big gyms um, to get to the UFC or even stay in the UFC. And I look forward to Saturday night showing that I can, I've got to the UFC and I'm going to win in the UFC with the team I have around me. Don't get me wrong, I, I look forward to in the future traveling around and um, adding to my um, game, like learning from other gyms and stuff like that. But that will be under David Lee. Like Dave will tell me which one we're going to and help me level up the game. But for this one, being in my hometown, um, and I didn't want there to be a narrative of me traveling somewhere else. I kind of want this to be, we got to the UFC and we won the UFC with my team from Watford, Team Crossface under David Lee. Cheers, man. Thank you. Thank you. Sam, okay. Try it. Oh, yes. So something you said that you've implemented into this camp is Saturday night fight simulation. Um, what does that look like from start to finish? And why did you decide to implement that into this camp? Um, it was like war. It was just war. No, joking. It, it was really good. Um, we are always looking for them one percenters. I'm always looking for the one percenters. Like, like I said about you're winning, so don't change nothing. But there's no, there's no harm in adding. You know, like looking for them one percents that can level up your game. The what? As soon as I stay stagnant and do the same thing over and over again, you're going to see the same fighter. But I truly believe we're looking for these one percenters that are going to make me that different fight every time I fight. And that fight simulation on a Saturday was just a little, it was just fresh, you know, it was war, it was, it was war. Saturday night was like, I've, I've had a fight every week, I've had a fight every week up to this fight Saturday night. But again, I believe those 1% and adding them into, always looking for them 1% is going to level up my game and level up my skills. Thank you. Uh, one more in the front right here. Uh, how do you see the main event playing out between Camaro and Leon? Leon gets the job done. I'm not being biased, I swear. Like, Leon gets the job done. No, I think it's going to be a great fight. And um, like I said, I'm a fan of the sport um, as well. So I look forward to getting my fight done, doing my media obligations, getting a slice of cake and um, sitting back and watching the show. But I believe Leon gets the job done. Um, he is truly the best in the world. Uh, one final one for me. Uh, just a short one. Um, Sam, yes. over here. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, watching fight movies with your brother, is there any favorite fight movie and why? Oh, there's quite a few, I'm not going to lie. Um, the one that popped to my head as soon as you asked that, I would say um, it has to be uh, Bloodsport, uh, Van Der. Bloodsport, we grew up on Kip, my dad would sit and we'd watch Kip Boxer, Bloodsport, Steven Seagal movies, all them, but Bloodsport comes to my head when you ask, so yeah, we'll go with that. And uh, Sam, uh, you you spoke about embracing the moment. Um, is it hard to truly kind of take stock and, and be proud of this kind of long-time goal that you've achieved in getting to the UFC but still maintaining focus on your opponent for, for Saturday night? Can you do both? Yes, of course I can. I believe I am, fo I am focused on the job that I have to get done, um, first and foremost. Um, I need to go in there Saturday night and win. And that's all I've got in my head is winning. But embracing the moment comes with that. And being able to do that is part of it. You know, like I, I'm not just here for one fight. I'm going to have a career in the UFC and this is only the beginning. So I will embrace the moment Saturday night, but do not get it twisted. I am going in there to win. And the only thing I've got in my mind right now is winning. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Thank you.